Hello and welcome to the program today. Great to have you along. Hope you'll stay around for the next little bit. My name is Charles Vance. I'm with a great friend of mine, Josh Huffman, pastor at New Life Church. Your dad's been on with me yeah. a couple times. Yeah, he had a great conversation. Yeah, we do. We, we think, I told him, we think alike probably more than anybody in our community <laughs> I think so too. when it comes to Scripture. So uh, we're going to look into some things today that I think will enlighten people, really help people um, you know, uh, the ministry that we have, somebody asked me years ago, said, well, how would you define your ministry? I said, how to? They said, how to what? I said, that's the way I define my ministry. <laughs> I grew up in church years ago when there was no application yeah. in the stuff that I grew up in. And, and it really, after I got a little older, it annoyed me to think that we had a really big Bible with one concept, die yeah. and go to heaven. Yeah, you, you actually have to do this stuff. When you uh, read it. Yes. <laughs> if you don't, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work for you. <laughs> so I've just found over the years that there is so much practical application of the Word of God for us to be successful and productive. You know, Jesus said, I think your dad was preaching his seminar, and he, he, yeah. he quoted John 10 and 10, that the thief comes to ki steal, kill, destroy. Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life. Yeah. And have it more abundantly. Yeah. You were teaching on that the other day, too. Yeah, I was teaching on that, too. Um, all throughout the Word of God, God says, if you're going to worship me, you got to do it my way. In yeah. other words, there's something we need to learn and apply. Yes, that's really what the kingdom is. That's right. Um, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, the Amplified Bible says, Seek ye first God's way of doing yeah. and God's way of being right. Yeah. And then all this stuff gets added to you. Right. So if we learn to work the principles of God yeah. according to His Word in our lives, it'll produce what He's promised us. What I like about Matthew 6, 33, when He says, seek first, that word first isn't just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. It's also, what it really means is above all else. Yeah. Prioritize. Every category. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And we can learn to do that, it, but it, it, it's discipline. Yes. You know, that's why the Bible calls us disciples, which means a disciplined one. Yeah. So everything we do, you go to the gym. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I go with Joe, my son-in-law, most of the time uh, because I need it. I need the energy yeah. that it produces, but it's a discipline issue. Yeah, it's a discipline. Uh, it, you don't get healthy just by standing outside the gym or just by walking into the gym or by taking a selfie in front of an it, exercise machine it, in the gym. Exactly. <laughs> we, I've got a cousin of mine that bought a membership to the Planet Fitness uh, about eight months ago, and the only thing that he did was go in to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, Joe said, we need to buy him a t-shirt with his picture on. Has anybody seen this man? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wear it to like the gym. Saying, yeah, I know the Word of God. I own a Bible. Oh, yeah. good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot of that over the years. I'm sure you have too. How long have you pastored? Uh, I have pastored, I've pastored, senior pastored for just three years, but I've been a pastor for over 20. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different life. Yes, it is. It's an interesting, it's the most exciting life. And sure. it's a life that almost chooses you. You have to choose it back, right, but it's right. a life that chooses you as well. When God places a calling on our life, I've told people it's like a eyeball trying to hear <laughs> if you're doing something other than what you're called to. Yeah. Because the calling is what gives you fulfillment. Yes. Uh, my ears are fulfilled by what they hear, not by what they see. Yeah. Uh, so if we're going to be people that follow the calling, the instruction of God, and the gifts and the calling are without repentance or they're irrevocable. Right. So you got it all your life, whether you work it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, listen, you answer that call because you first and foremost really love God. Yeah. And then second, you really have to love people. And the people yes. are going to challenge that love. Yes, they will. <laughs> on a regular basis. <laughs> but because your love for God is so strong, that love for people it also is strong too. Yeah, my dad pastored 31 years. I pastored for 28. And by the way, I'm traveling now and ministering. If uh, those of you pastors that follow us, give me a call here at the office and we'll set up some time to get together. It'd be great. You're traveling a little bit. A little bit. Your dad travels a whole yeah, lot. Yeah, well, my dad do the traveling. I'm a homebody. Yeah, I can stay gotcha. home, I will. Hey, we, I want to talk today um, 
Now, I've talked to you just the least bit about this, and we're just going to back back and forth on it some because I know yeah. you got some ideas on it. Yeah. Um, the Bible says that we're in an environment that's not a really good one by being in the world. Yes. Um, the scripture tells us 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 that Satan's the god of the world. And there's a lot of people that misunderstand the term earth and world. Mm -hmm. It's two different things. Yeah. The world is the system that operates, that Satan operates in the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That's right. what Old Testament and New Testament yeah. says. So we live on an earth that God owns that he told us to take care of. Right. And a lot of times we've turned that over to Satan. Yeah. Um, for a believer to not be aware of the environment we live in, okay, and understand that God has placed in us his kingdom to, to execute his plan, his purpose, but for us to not be aware of the environment we're in is like, dressing up like a seal and jumping in shark infested waters. Okay. Yeah. You're asking you're asking to be bit. <laughs> there is no doubt. <laughs> it's just it makes no sense for me for, for believers to have their head in the sand and pretend that everything's just gonna be fine and work out. It's not Genesis 1, 26, 27 says that uh, when God created man, he the first thing he did was he blessed them, yep. which is a term that most people don't understand. Yep. It actually means to articulate something to them or give them an instruction. And, and, and it said he blessed them and told them, take dominion. Right. Um, in the, the Greek New Testament, it's, it gets translated power a lot of times, but it's the word kratos, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, kratos, whatever. <laughs> but it, it actually means to take dominion right. of something. It doesn't mean that you're just empowered, it means that you actually do something. Right. To, to use that power to take control of things. Yeah. And, you know, Christians have, have sat by a lot of times and not done anything when we should be in control of everything. That's exactly right. You remember the old Pinky and the Brain <laughs> TV shows? <laughs> yes. The, 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 the Pinky would say, what are we going to do tonight, Brain? <laughs> and Brain says, we're going to take over the world. Take over the world. <laughs> Every time. Um, so God established in the creation, He wanted not only for man to have dominion, but He wanted an environment where God could freely have a relationship with us. Absolutely. And of course, man, you know, God gives us one rule. He says, don't eat of that one tree. And like a, every toddler that you say, don't eat that cookie, what are they going to do? They're going to go after that don't, cookie. Don't look at the ceiling. Don't look at, right. They're going to do the one thing that they're not supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. And so man blows it. But God loved this world. He mm -hmm. did. He loved his creation. Uh, and because of that, he set up covenant with it, right? Yes. He sure did. So he goes, hey, listen. I've said it, we, we read that through Genesis 9 where God set up the covenant through Noah and everything. And, mm -hmm. and he says, listen, I want to make sure though, even though this world now because of sin isn't quite the original plan, I still need to have a plan in place where I can have that fellowship and man can now have that domain. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if you read in Psalm chapter 8, Psalm chapter 81, the scripture repeats all of that again. Yeah. And, and it tells us that we're supposed to take dominion over everything that God created. And I know right. this, this, I know, man, you talk this to religious people. Yeah. I've had people look at me like, I'd like to kill you. Yeah. I mean, while I'm preaching, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> like that's not possible. <laughs> Death stairs. <laughs> uh, we've tried it before and it's not worked. <laughs> but I think the try that most people have is they're trying things outside of what we just talked about, the kingdom of God. Yeah. Because if you don't do it God's way, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, and That's, we have to use God's power to do it as well. Right. God establishes his kingdom because you can't do the Lord's work the devil's way. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> yes. and, and listen, what we don't have in our country is a, short of, a shortage of anointed pastors and worship and leaders. And we don't. We've got so many anointed, gifted pastors and teachers mm -hmm. and gifts and worship in it's the United amazing. States. We do. It's wonderful. What we do have, though, is a shortage of the revelation of the kingdom of God and the authority that we have in that kingdom. Yes. Right. So now what happens is the enemy's strategy is to take advantage of that lack of revelation. Sure. And because we don't know how to live in the kingdom of God using the authority and the dominion that you're talking about, he's infiltrating communities, families, you name it. He's worked in it because we don't know how to live. He blinds the minds of them that don't believe. Yeah. And I used to think that was just for lost people, yeah. but it's not. No. There's all kinds of people that I've run into says, I'm born again. You know, Jesus is the Lord of my life. Yeah. And they don't believe portions of the scripture. 
Right. They don't believe they're available for us today. Right. Uh, and if you're not believing in one area, man, Satan will take that and run with it. He will absolutely use what you don't know against you. Absolutely. He'll, work, he'll wear you out. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 15 says, you need to be blameless and harmless sons of God without rebuke, and watch this, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation or generation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Yeah. So the responsibility that we have as Christians or believers is that we should be so brilliant, uh, not just in our mind, we should, do, we should be doing that too, but so brilliant in, in our illumination of things right. that we actually start changing the environment instead of allowing the environment to change us. Yes, absolutely. Um, when you place a believer who is filled with the Word of God and understands, understands the authority they mm -hmm. have because they've submitted to the kingdom of God, they should begin to change the environment they're in. Absolutely. It should happen. You should start to see, it may not happen overnight, most likely not going to, but there and, should be an immediate impact. And we, and we are going to have to be strong to do that. Yeah, there, do. there is a scientific uh, thing called thermoequilibrium, yeah. which means that if you place a cold and hot body together, they're going to neutralize, right. uh, which is very scary in some cir circumstances. I mean, yeah. the, the strongest thing will win. If yeah. something's hotter than the cold thing is colder, then this thing is going to get more warm than it should get. That's right. uh, I, I used this in a message series that I did on this environment within an environment. What this does, this is just some red liquid. Actually, it's Kool-Aid that I polluted <laughs> because there was only about this much left. I really like it strong. Uh, but this bottle actually controls the shape of what's inside of it. Yeah. Um, Jesus prayed for his disciples in John chapter 17. And he said, they're in the world, but they're not of the world, yeah. which simply meant they weren't a product of the world. The, the world wasn't producing them or yeah. controlling them. And he went on to pray that every believer would be as his disciples were, yeah. that they would be in the world, but not controlled by the world. Yeah. To me, I mean, that's the longest prayer that Jesus ever prayed, first of all, that we have recorded. Right. <clears throat> and the whole thing was about, you're in a mess. You're like right in the middle of a mess. Don't let the mess get in you. Right. Don't, I, don't be surprised. He's making sure we are aware. He's, he's, he's letting us know you're going to be <clears throat> in this messy, crazy world, this dark, evil world. So you make sure that you are following my teachings. You are obeying yes. me, paying attention. Hold and on, <laughs> no, wait a minute. You mean you have to do something? Oh, I know, isn't that terrible? <laughs> isn't that terrible? Some people think it is. Can't, can't just God <clears throat> do everything for us? Can't we pray one time the, and it just happens? <laughs> there's almost a mentality, and, and you know Paul addresses this over and over again, we've got grace, don't we have grace? Well, yeah. Paul said, so you think you should sin because you have grace? God forbid. <laughs> and he says it over and over again. Like he's like, you're not getting this, so I'm going to have to say it repeatedly. Right, right. Yeah, you are, you are going to absolutely be thrown right into the middle of this messy world. Yeah. But you've got to be ready for, you've got to be ready for a fight. You've got to be ready to apply that faith. You've got to be ready to keep your confession strong. You've got yes. to be ready to do the right thing in the wrong environment. Absolutely. That's right. You, I think too many times we allow the environment to uh, uh, intimidate us to some degree as Christians. Yeah. You know, um, back a few, it's not so bad now, I don't think, mm -hmm. but a few years ago, well, probably the reason it's not so bad is because everybody thinks you're supposed to accept everything. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, if you'd tell somebody, I'm a believer, I'm a full gospel believer, I'm charismatic, or yeah. I'm Pentecostal, or whatever you'd say you were. Yeah. I mean, people were like, really? And you're like, what do you mean by that? You know, I now. Had, I had a neighbor one time, <laughs> I had a neighbor one time. So, so we're, we move into this new neighborhood and we introduce ourselves to all our neighbors. And, and uh, just like any neighbor would, they do a little trolling. And now you can kind of learn about people based on their Facebook and everything yeah. else. So he, he's walking around the neighborhood and he comes over to me and he goes, you part one of them. 
you're part of one of them spirit-filled churches? I said, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm like giving him a little eyeball. He says, like, y'all, y'all speak in tongues and all that? And I said, well, yeah. And he took three steps back. <laughs> it's like it was going to get on him. Like, buddy, listen, you better be careful. Yeah, yeah, watch it, man. Watch it, man. <laughs> you want me to start jump now? off me on you. <laughs> Yeah, and, the, and the, really the sad part of that is it won't jump off of you onto them unless they want it to no, jump off. No, So Jesus said in that big prayer, yeah. he said, uh, don't, don't take them out of the world. Yeah. And I'm thinking, shoot, <laughs> why not? <laughs> you know, Paul even said, uh, you know, I'd like to just leave, yeah. I, but, but it's better that I stay here. Uh, sometimes I felt like that, you know, it's just, I'm tired of, I've got a buddy of mine that says, God, I love you, but I don't care, care much for your kids. <laughs> <laughs> it can be exhausting. It really can. It can be exhausting because the enemy doesn't stop. He no, doesn't he stop. doesn't. He doesn't stop. But that just means that our purpose should be crystal clear. Yeah. The enemy, listen, the enemy, if he can't get outright get you to quit and reject. He's going to just try to slowly discourage you. S certainly. That's what he's going to try to yeah, do. Slowly, slowly discourage down. you and wear you down to the yeah. point where you're willing to just give up. Yeah, and a lot of times, it seems like a lot of times people have one thing hit them and they, they let it just like push them back so far. Yeah. Uh, everybody goes through stuff. Yeah. You've gone through stuff. I've Absolutely. gone through stuff. Absolutely. You know, I remember your dad calling me years ago and said, What's going on up at your church? I said, what's going on at yours? <laughs> he said, well, this is going on. I said, well, this is going on. Yeah. And there's just all kinds of crazy stuff that will hit you. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you think, ah, oh, we're finally done with the devil. We, you know, we've we've yeah. worn him out. He's just getting ready. He's setting up again. Yeah. I read the Bible. Mm -hmm. I've completed yeah. it. I'm, I am now mm -hmm. the perfect Christian and I will have perfect faith. Yeah. yeah. If only, right? <laughs> I had a uh, guy that was working for me. Most people know I owned a construction company for 20 plus years and had a, a bricklayer that was working for me. His wife called me one morning. She said, he, he's wanting me to read the Bible to him. He was illiterate. Yeah. He was an older guy. Uh, not older, he's a middle-aged guy. Okay. What middle-aged? He was a young guy. Yeah, you know, let's, I let's figured, call him, I'm yeah. middle-aged now. Well, what am I? <laughs> and you'd be young. Great hair. I'm, I'm still considered young in my head. <laughs> so she called me and said, he's asking me to read the Bible to him. What should I do? I said, read the Bible to him. Because <laughs> he claimed he was an atheist. Yeah. So he's wanting her to read the Bible now. So she called me back about a week later and said he gave his life to the Lord. I told him he's never going to have any more problems in his life. <laughs> I just cringed inside. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was talking <clears throat> to a fellow one time. He had asked me to pray. And he... He, was, his, he had a family member facing a real serious situation. He said, you know, I'd like you to pray. Well, I ran, I did, I prayed over him, came back to him a couple days later, checked with him, how you doing? And he said, well, I had a fellow come in here who's a good Christian, and he prayed and he said, hey, listen, you may as well just chalk it up as done. You don't have to worry about it every mo er, anymore. Everything's gonna be taken care of. He pretty much gave me a guarantee. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> well, you let me know how that goes. Yeah, I hope you're believing you that You prayed one. once, so the enemy's gonna quit. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> That's the way it works, I guess. Yeah, and it's a put on the whole armor of God that you can withstand so the evil one. You can withstand the evil one. That's exactly yeah. right. And and we have to be uh, people to do that. And, and you know, some people think, well, shoot, I don't want to do that. That's too hard. Right. But it's actually not hard when when you start doing what God told you to do, yeah. and you start living in victory, which is the cool part of it. That's exactly right. But and victory only comes as a result of a battle. Yeah. The only way you are not going to be over, overly influenced by your environment is if you keep that armor on. Yeah. It's the way it's, the way it's designed to be in the Word of God. You keep that armor mm -hmm. on, you're not going to take the blows. You, you know, you walk outside and try to fight your battles without one piece of that armor, the enemy is going to see the vulnerability. And what do you think yeah. he's going to go after? If he knows, you got a, if he knows you're a sucker for that left hook, what do you think he's going to throw? Absolutely. Yeah, every time. Yeah, and I've told people before, you know, a lot of times we identify to Satan the things that really bother us because we don't keep our mouth shut. Uh, and, and because of that, you know, he doesn't know everything. The no. Bible said if he had known that the, the Lord was the Lord of glory, he right. wouldn't have had him crucified. Right. <clears throat> so he fell into his own trap. Yeah. Uh, and we tell Satan sometimes stuff. And, you know, I've said, you know, where's a, like if you're in a boxing match and somebody starts bleeding, I said, where's the guy start punching? He said, no, he's bleeding in the face. I'll punch him in the belly now. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's going to go for the part that he knows is bothering him. Yeah. 
And that's what he'll do with us. If we start mouthing off about stuff all the time, well, it's just the devil's on me and he's beating me up and I'm, I'm so tired of this thing and that's happening to me. Yeah. Man, he's just going to go for it harder and harder. There's multiple reasons why the Word of God instructs us to do all things without murmuring and complaining. Because yeah. <laughs> when you murmur and complain, you're basically straight up telling the enemy, here's where I'm vulnerable. Yeah. Here's what I'm struggling with. Here's what I don't like right now. Here's what I'm frustrated about. Mm -hmm. Here's what I, you know, I'm mm. tormented by. And when you do that, the enemy's like taking, <laughs> taking yeah, notes. Yeah, taking notes. Taking notes, ready to just attack those yeah. things. And, and, and I've told people for years, Satan is a student of people. Yeah. You know, he's done that for, we know, 6,000 years. Yeah. And uh, if he studies people, he sees things that's going to happen in your life before you see it, probably. Yeah. So we need to just be on guard. Yeah, he's playing a chess match. He really is. He's yeah. moving pieces uh, into place <clears throat> and hoping that you'll take the bait. Be sober, be vigilant, right. clear-minded and alert. Yeah. Uh, clear-minded and alert because you have an adversary, an opponent, the devil, yeah. like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he yeah. may devour. Right. But the instruction to us is resist him steadfast in the faith. Right. How do we do that? Oh gosh, you know, well, you resist him by, like what we've been discussing, number one, putting on that armor, making sure that your heart is after God. Mm -hmm. okay? That heart that heart gets exposed. You don't guard that heart. Yeah. Oh man, that's the quickest way. That could quickest quickest way for the enemy to take advantage of you. When you start when your heart starts to turn. Also, you've got to stay surrounded by people of faith. You can't isolate yes. yourself. That's important. You get in an environment that's right. Thank you. Yeah. First step away from God is a step away from God's people. We say that often at the church because yes. we want to remind people, listen, when you are weak in faith, be somewhere where you're not going. This is one, one of my pet peeves as a pastor when people, and I'm not, I am very much for church. So disclaimer, I'm very pro-church. <laughs> yeah. But why keep going to a church that you constantly leave discouraged? Yes. You don't feel built up. You mm -hmm. don't feel inspired. You don't leave with your faith stronger. You leave either the same way or worse. That makes yeah. no sense to me. Well, the scripture says that the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, a teacher is there to equip the saints to right. do the work of the ministry yep. so that we're no more children right. thrown all over the place. Right. Uh, and we become strong yeah. because of it if, if, if we're in the right atmosphere. Yeah. And I attend church with you guys now, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a good atmosphere. And, uh, and I'm glad to hear it. You make our atmosphere stronger because you, you bring the faith that you have Absolutely. and the Spirit of God within you. And I bring the faith that I have and the Spirit of God with me. And, no and we build a stronger, a stronger atmosphere mm. of faith and expectancy. You, you can have an environment that is within an ugly environment and you can live in that environment mm. and make that environment really make a, a strong impact and a big change in the environment that is around you. We're running out of time, but we're going to pick up on this again next week. So I hope for sure that you'll join us, uh, set your DVR, whatever the case is. I just want to let you know if this ministry here at Empowered is being a blessing to you, well, you can help us be a blessing to others by sowing a seed this month. Watch. Empowered Ministries is dedicated to reaching our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Your financial support is helping us extend God's grace to the multitudes and empowering us to reach the lost, heal the sick, feed the hungry, and to bring hope to the hopeless. Through Empowered Television, we're impacting nations by teaching believers to thrive in their calling and to live successful, powerful, and productive lives. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, you can help us continue to do the works of Jesus by sowing a seed this month. With your gift of any size, you'll receive our monthly partner letter, and with your gift of $41 or more, we will also include a special teaching by Pastor Charles Vance that will take your faith to another level. When you become an EMT partner, you are helping us transform lives around the world. And we believe what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you so much for your gifts of support. We appreciate you more than words can tell praying for you every day. And before I leave the air today, I want to give you an opportunity to invite Jesus into your life. Do you know that Jesus already paid for your sins? It's a done deal. He already died for you. He already raised again. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he's not even holding the world's sins against them anymore. Well, you mean I'm saved? 
Uh, you can be just in a matter of moments, but not yet. The scripture says you've got to confess Jesus with your mouth, that he's the Lord of your life, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead so you could be justified. Will you do that with me? It's easy. If you're serious, a change will take place. Say this out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I confess him as my Lord. I believe he died for my sins, and Father, you raised him from the dead. From this day forward, I commit my life to you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, meant it from your heart, welcome to the family of God. We've put together a Get Started packet for new Christians. It's our gift to everyone that's prayed with us today. You can get yours by going to our website, charlesvance.org, press the New Believers tab. We'll get that packet right back out in the mail to you. Josh, man, I appreciate you being on the program today. I've enjoyed and it. We can just keep going nonstop talk all day. on this. Talk all day. Uh, and we're going to, when we get back into this next week, I just want people to realize the importance that God placed on us as us understanding, just having the understanding, first of all, that we're in a rough environment, yeah. that Satan is still operating the world. He's the God of this world. That word world means perpetuity or something that starts like a hamster wheel. Yeah. And he wants to get you on it with him. Yeah, if he can <clears> get you, listen, it's, it's just, it starts just as simple as one bad day. Mm -hmm. One bad day. And you take that one bad day and allow it to become two. Yes. That second bad day becomes the third one. You have, you know, bad news, a bad report. Uh, you know, your boss is mad at you. You get a bill you didn't expect. It could be a number of different things. Yep. Don't allow that one bad day to turn into multiple bad days that now you are not following God's plan, God's path. They will feed themselves. Yeah. And, and Satan has, he, Satan doesn't create, he perverts. That's right. So the system that God created for us to live in and to go from glory to glory or his manifested presence to more of his manifested presence yeah. is perverted by Satan yeah. to get us to spiral down instead of going up. That's right. And he's just going to, he'll, he'll do anything he can do to wear us out. Anything and everything. And again, whatever you keep vulnerable, whatever you don't cover yeah. and expose, he's going to go after. That's a key. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to encourage you guys today. And we want to encourage you to, to if, you're not, if you're not visiting the Word of God every day, do it. Get in the Word of God. Uh, I tell people, you know, if I, if I have to leave in a hurry, I grab like a snack. <laughs> a little Debbie, something, something that feels good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Grab a snack, man. You can get on your phone and put the phone app in and they'll send you stuff all the time. Yeah. Uh, just get in the Word. Grab something every day. Pray every day. Just spend a few, few minutes of time talking to, to God every day. Uh, and don't whine and complain. Talk about stuff that will encourage you and build you up. To Learn some of the promises of God. Start putting them to work in your life and talk about them. Think about them. The Bible told Joshua, God told Joshua, he said, think about them, talk about them, and act, act on them, them right. and they'll change your life. That's right. I love you. Talk to you soon. Remember, always stay in the Word because you will stay empowered.